Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian. I am Elder Bill Engel, co-chair of missions. We are delighted that you are with us. Your session is watching the numbers on COVID very carefully and making plans for precautions we will take when we reopen. We are concerned about the numbers in our area and grateful for the support of the congregation as we continue to evaluate. Thank you to those of you who have donated from faraway places. We are humbled by your participation with us. If you would like to donate to the Mission and Ministry of FIRST, please send your donations to 100 East Frederick, Stanton, Virginia 24401. We have been able to keep our staff employed due to your generosity. Now let us worship God. Please join me in the call to worship from the 86th Psalm. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord. Gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. <laughs>
Good morning on this Father's Day to all the men of the church who serve in a capacity that lives into the baptismal vows we make to serve as nurturing and growing and protective people um, to all of God's children. Please join me now in our responsive act of confession that you will find printed in your bulletin. Friends, sin is any act that separates us from God or one another. As we read part of Romans 6 together, let us recommit to the unity of Christ. Brothers and sisters, should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? All of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into his death, so that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so too we might walk in newness of life. We know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body of sin might be destroyed, and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is free from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So we also must consider ourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and free. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Greet one another in the love of the Lord. Blessing. Hear the word of the Lord from the book of Genesis, chapter 21, verses 8 through 21. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah tells you to do, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of a child. As she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. This is the word of the Lord. Let 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in your great gifts to us, you teach us, you move us forward, you grow us up. So now speak to our hearts, O Lord, and may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts and our minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Scripture here says some things that may be discomforting to some of us, particularly in our current time and place, but then Scripture gives us buckets of comfort as well. We have cast our lot with the Lord, so let us bear up and tune in. God is good, and we are called to a biblical perspective in the midst of all times. So let us look at the father of many nations here in Scripture and ask, why is this story told to us? Well, for one, right here in the middle of the miracle story of Abraham and Sarah bearing a child in their old age, we have a tale of how humans mess things up. Do not try this at home. In our story, the clock is ticking. God has promised children. Sarah interferes with God's plan because she cannot conceive of God's promise coming true as God has spoken it to her. Can we? A mountain climber slips off a precipice and clings to a rope over a thousand foot drop. He looks up to heaven with fear and despair in his voice and shouts, Is anybody up there? A voice booms from above. You will be saved if you show your faith by letting go of the rope. The man looks down, then up again, and shouts, Is there anybody else up there? Sarah interferes with God's plan because she cannot conceive of God's promise taking place the way God says it will. Can we? Self-examination for this Father of Many Nations Day. Where might we bulldog something like Sarah? Because of our impatience, because of our disbelief in what God says, this is a spiritual question. Then Abraham asks, according to traditional marriage standards, and if you don't know what those are, depending on your wealth, that might be three wives, one concubine, and five servants. Sarah says, I'm old. Have a go at my maidservant. Abraham, surprise, complies. And then, happy Father's Day. No surprise, really, this is the way of the world, of his traditions, the question for us is, do we act on what came before instead of according to what God is doing now? Where do we confuse tradition with faithfulness? Where do we confuse the way the world turns with the way things ought to be? Where do we lift what is normal to our generation that actually is in direct opposition to the plans of our once and future king. When did we stop listening? This is a spiritual question. Next, having achieved her goal, Sarah is still not happy. She gets jealous. Thou shalt not covet, Sarah. The question for us with this is, she planned for God's word to work out in her own way. She took her handmaiden, she gave her to Abraham, the handmaiden had a child. Then Sarah was covetous of the relationship with the, tri the child. What sacred promises do we break when we get in our own way? when we don't let God proceed according to God's word and he has to clean up after us. 
The theological question is knowing who God is, how then shall we live? Spiritual practice demands that we examine ourselves as to how well we are one another, staying in God's word. So this next part is tough. How well is Father Abraham one another? Not well at all. Here's the challenge for June 21st, 2020, Father's Day. The biblical patriarch casts the mother of his child into the desert wilderness with nothing but a piece of bread and a bottle of water. Hagar is sent into the desert wilderness with her child. How can anyone act with such reckless disregard for life? And note here, Christians, we have to see where the scripture simply calls Hagar by her name and nationality, Hagar the Egyptian. Sarah calls her by her one down place in society. Handmaid, bondwoman, maidservant, slave. When Abraham talks about her, the mother of his children, he names her by her one down place. Handmaid bondwoman, maidservant, slave. But when the angel talks about her, the angel calls her Hagar. Christians, pay attention. It is a lot easier to let yourself get away with a less than moral action if you depersonalize someone. They become an object. And our scripture does not let us off the hook. We are allowed to see the pain of the other, the weeping of Hagar, the crying of her baby. And we know this pain, even if we aren't this maid servant. Most of us, truth be told, have at some time or another in our lives experienced the feelings of outcastness. A social pecking order is one of the most unspiritual things about our society. And it has taken place inside the church, inside communities of grace, which we must continually work to overcome. But here is the treasure, beloved. Here we are shown the treasure in the midst of the wilderness, in the midst even of our own sense of outcastness, in the middle of our own namelessness. God knows you, and God hears. Weishma Elohim. God hears. This is why Hagar's child is named Ishmael. Weishmael Elohim. This is the beginning of the Islamic nation, a nation also sired by Abraham, a nation also blessed by God. And beloved, and aside, in case you have never heard this, Allah is as legitimate a name for God as Dios is. It is simply a foreign language to us, to us. Renee uses Italian in her song, Deal. As a matter of fact, beloved, we are the foreigners who renamed Allah, God. Arabic speakers of all Abrahamic faiths, including Christians and Jews, use the word Allah to refer to God. The Christian Arabs of today, the Assyrians, the Maltese, have no other word for God than Allah. So let us not cast ourselves with the crew who doesn't read the Bible. We see this in the word of the Lord, out of the outcast, God raises up the put down. Dr. Phyllis Tribal in Texts of Terror notice that Hagar is a pivotal figure in biblical theology. She is the first person in scripture whom a divine messenger visits and the only person who dares to name a deity. Within the historical memories of Israel, she is the first woman to bear a child. 
This conception and birth make her an extraordinary figure in the story of faith. The first woman to hear an Annunciation, the only one to receive a divine promise of descendants, and the first to weep for her dying child. Truly, Hagar the Egyptian is the prototype of not only special, but all mothers in Israel. Behold this handmaiden on your way to beholding the handmaiden of the Lord. On this Father's Day, let us all reach to attain the actions of the Divine Father, the God who hears. Psalm 68, Father of orphans and protector of widows is God in his holy habitation. The promise is from God and for human beings. The promise is life and not death. The heart of God is one of compassion and mercy and love, and we all are called to live by that heart. They will know we are Christians by our love. And may everything that we do give glory to God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen.
ti vogliamo bene. From the time I came in today, my heart has been overflowing with gratitude for uh, the people who are here, including the voice of Renee, uh, who parent the church with uh, love and grace. And uh, I'm just going to turn uh, my camera around because the three of the guys are right out there. Uh, you can see uh, there's Jeff. There is George, there's Otto up there playing uh, Renee's MP3, and of course you've gotten to see Bill today. And I'm very, very grateful to um, these men who treat the whole church like uh, family and do whatever they can uh, to, to lead and to give and to love and um, to sustain our whole family of faith. We are so blessed in this church. And then... Um, to have Dr. Huff, who uh, writes this incredible music from scratch every week for the scripture is just, you know, God is amazing. As we come to this time of prayer with uh, hearts full of gratitude on this Father's Day, um, I want to remind us, those who, uh, for whom this is a national uh, ambivalence day like Mother's Day is for some. Um, we know that Father's Day can trigger folks too because they didn't have good parenting or they're estranged from a child or for the women who had to be both mother and father or the fathers who had to be both mother and father that uh, it can be a complicated day and on this Father's Day just lift in gratitude all the people who keep their baptismal vows to the glory of God. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for all the goodness that you have showered on us, for sustaining us, for carrying us through difficult times, for loving us and providing for us even when we are difficult children. We give you thanks, O oh Lord. We give you thanks on this day for the men in our lives who have made a difference to our living. And we offer you our thanks and praise. I give you thanks for the good surgeons for my father's hip and for his continuing recovery. We lift Nancy to you and ask for healing from her bug, for Renee's breathing problems, her asthma, we ask your intervention. And for our country, O oh Lord, we lift our prayers, ask that you would provide us the tools to work with you for the good of your kingdom, that your will would be done on earth as it is above. On this day, Lord, when we celebrate family, equip us all in our hearts to celebrate the family of faith and to give you all praise and glory for sustaining us through difficult times. We come before you praying as Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Go into the world in peace. Go into the world ready to bear the Father's love to all his children. And may that same wonderful love, the love of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you always, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>